Hey everyone, welcome back. I have a question for you. What is stopping you from understanding native speakers? Is it the speed that they talk? Is it their pronunciation? Or is it the difficult vocabulary, phrases and expressions that they use? In my experience, it's usually a combination of all three of those things for me studying a foreign language and for most of the students I've taught. So in this series, we try to tackle all three of those points we will listen to a native speaker, then we'll review all of the vocabulary they used. The topic today is about being late. And my warm up question for you, which of these phrases can you hear? Which one does the speaker use? Let's take a listen and don't look at those subtitles. Look, I hold my hands up. I'm pretty terrible at being on time. I'll be the first to admit that. I know it's one of my flaws and I don't do it on purpose. And to be fair, I always let whoever I'm meeting know that I'm running a bit late. What really irks me is when people are late, but don't even let me know. I feel like a quick text is common courtesy. Like the other day, I was meeting some guys at the station and they were like 15 minutes late. And I wouldn't have had a go at them, except they didn't say anything. I could have grabbed a coffee or something rather than just hanging around the gate. Okay, did you catch it? He said, I wouldn't have had a go at them. Now, don't worry if you're not sure what this means or why he used it, we will cover that soon and pause the video now if you want to look at these comprehension questions, but we will go through them at the end. This is the color coding that I use. I will keep it right there above my head. So first he said, look, I hold my hands up. I'm pretty terrible at being on time. Why did he say I hold my hands up? You can think of it literally like being arrested. I'm the bad guy putting my hands up. You're admitting to something and you're being honest. I hold my hands up. I'm not the best at time management, for example. You can also say, I'm being honest or I admit. Then he says another phrase, which is very similar. I'll be the first to admit that. And it means pretty much the same thing. I'm showing honesty for something I do that's bad. She spends way too much money, but she'll be the first to admit that. So. There's this friend who spends way too much money, but she's aware of it. She says, oh, I know I spend too much. Uh, I'm trying to spend less. I'm working on it. She knows it's a problem. I know it's one of my flaws. Well, that makes sense because he's just said, I hold my hands up. I'm admitting it. A flaw is a, a negative thing that people do and I don't do it on purpose. Okay. And to be fair, I always let whoever I'm meeting know that I'm running a bit late. So he's saying, yeah, okay, I do this. I'm late. It's bad. But he's saying, and to be fair, I'm, I'm trying to be fair to myself now. He's kind of giving himself some credit as well. I always let whoever I'm meeting know I'm running a bit late. So I do communicate. What really irks me is when people are late, but don't even let me know. So people who don't communicate. He's saying that he's late, but he does tell people what irks him is when people are late and don't let him know. So irks me is something that annoys you, something that bothers you. Here's something that irks me. It really irks me when people stand and block the doorways. That really irks me. You can also say it gets on my nerves, very commonly used and that grinds my gears. That's a more American phrase, I think made popular by the TV show Family Guy. There's a, a meme of Peter saying it grinds his gears. Anyway, don't worry if you are not familiar with that. I'd say gets on my nerves or irks me used more. What irks me is when people are late, but don't even let me know. Okay, I think we're okay so far. I feel like a quick text is common courtesy. Now, common courtesy, similar to common sense, common sense is intelligence that you expect everybody to have. Well, common courtesy or common decency is good manners or politeness that you expect everybody to have. It should be for simple things that you expect everybody to do. I thought that holding the door open for someone should be common courtesy. Yeah, you, everybody should hold the door open for everybody else. Makes sense to me. Like the other day, I was meeting some guys at the station and they were like 15 minutes late. Okay, so it's kind of late. And I wouldn't have had a go at them, except they didn't say anything. So I wouldn't have had a go at them. To have a go at someone means to tell someone off, to tell someone they did something wrong. This is very, very common. 
I had a go at him for using my phone without asking. Hey, uh, excuse me, that that's my phone. You don't take it without asking like that. And then this one over here uses it the same way that the speaker did. I wouldn't have had a go at her, but she did it several times. So maybe the first time she did it, oh, that's okay, I'll let it slide. I'll, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm not gonna say anything. But she did it several times, so then I had a go at her. You can also say, there's a lot here, to scold, to lay into someone, to call or chew someone out. You don't need to remember all of these. There's a lot of different ways. I'm not sure why we need so many ways to be angry at someone. A lot of these are very British sounding to me. I don't know what that says about our culture, but there's a lot. Please be aware of them. I wouldn't use this last one yourself if you want to sound natural, but be aware that some people do say it. Be careful not to confuse it with to have a go at something. So to say to have a go at kayaking, for example, means to give it a try. It's completely different. So he said, I wouldn't have had a go, gotten mad at them, except they didn't say anything. So this is okay, but not saying anything, not sending a quick text, that is not okay. I could have grabbed a coffee or something rather than just hanging around the gate. So he said he went to the station. He's just standing here at this gate, waiting for them because he's thinking, well, they should be here now. How about now? If they sent a text saying, oh, sorry, we're gonna be 10, 15 minutes late, then he could have grabbed a coffee. Okay, let's go back to these comprehension questions. Does the speaker think it's okay to be late? Well, he said, it's one of my flaws. So he knows it's a, a bad thing. He's admitting that. So no, it's not okay. He knows it's not good. Did the speaker get upset at their friends? Well, he did. They were 15 minutes late. That's not why he was upset. I wouldn't have had a go at them for that, but they didn't say anything. So yes, they did get upset with their friends. And the last question, did the speaker get coffee? Why or why not? So there's a couple of things here. I could have grabbed a coffee or something rather than just hanging around the gate. So no, he was hanging around the gate waiting. He couldn't grab coffee because he stayed there. So the answer is no. But one more thing to note, he said a coffee or something. So in my mind, he doesn't really need the coffee. It wasn't what he was trying to do, but he's just giving that as an example. Like I could have gotten a coffee. I could have gone for a little walk. I could have grab lunch and come back, I don't know, something. He could have done anything. Coffee was just kind of an example. There were some tricky points there in today's lesson, but I hope if you go back and listen again, everything will make a lot more sense. And I hope you got something useful out of this video. If you'd like to keep your study session going for today, there is something else lined up for you, but that's it. Thanks very much for watching.